This is the ANET A3. The A3 is an enclosed acrylic 3D printer from ANET, a Far East company in China. This printer is a standard Cartesian setup with a 150 by 150 by 150 millimeter build volume. It comes with an MK8 style extruder, a part cooling fan, a full graphical LCD display, and an aluminum heated bed. This printer was unboxed during a live stream. It's advertised as a fully assembled 3D printer, but I did find some issues that had to be corrected before we could start printing. As for print quality, it does turn out a pretty nice model. I've run it for over 100 hours on a couple different types of filament, and so far, no issues. It was somewhat disappointing that there was no operational manual either on paper or on the SD card, so some guessing did occur during the unboxing. So let's get into it. Again, this printer does print pretty well. I even printed a few of the models from the SD card this time that I don't usually do. They all look pretty good. The acrylic frame feels pretty sturdy and it makes it easy to move around. Outside of dropping it, it should hold up pretty well. The design is easy to use when reloading filament and removing models. The firmware is also pretty intuitive. It's much easier to move around with the click knob than it is on a lot of other printers. Adjustments are pretty easy to make with the location of the motor mounts and the end stops. Just be careful when tightening them, they are mounted directly onto acrylic. Also, the electronics and power supply are tucked underneath to give it a nice, neat look. It does have a makeshift spool holder and filament guide on the back, but nothing very useful. And now, the bad list. When I unwrapped the kit, I noticed there were some screws and nuts floating around inside the frame. I quickly found that they went to a Z-rod bushing that had become unconnected. I'm not even sure how this could have happened. Both screws and nuts coming off because of rough shipping practices? Highly unlikely. Next, when trying to home the printer, I noticed the Y motor belt was way too loose to actually print. So a quick adjustment and we were back on track. So now that these two repairs were made, you could now once again call it a ready out of the box 3D printer. While queuing up my first print, the knob on the LCD was sticking. So I adjusted the acrylic with my deburring tool and that corrected that issue. The LCD is also mounted straight up and down. So unless the printer is at eye level, it's really hard to see. It needs to be angled up some. Next, when I was about three prints in, the 3D printed fan duct decided to fall off onto my model. A little super glue, and it was back to printing. The heat bed had masking tape on it, so get rid of that, maybe grab some glue stick. It would be nice if they'd give you a piece of PEI or a build tack sheet to go on top. The heat bed has the same cheap plug on it that will more than likely fail at some point, so consider removing that and soldering the wires direct. The SD card is not in the most ideal location either. It's kind of hard to use. I know it sounds strange, but the first few days I had this printer, the most annoying part about the whole thing was its smell. It reeked of burned acrylic, presumably from the laser cutting. I'm either getting used to the smell or it's starting to air out, because it is a lot better a weekend. And lastly, the biggest turnoff to this machine is the noise. It's not just noisy, it's annoying. It groans and grinds on every movement. I think it's caused by where the X motor is mounted on the aluminum and cheap linear bearings. Oiling these doesn't even help it. The best I could come up with was wedging a piece of cork under where the motor mounts and putting the whole thing on a piece of foam. That seemed to help some. Definitely not a printer that's gonna win you points with the family on long overnight prints. Just have a listen. This printer uses the same red electronics board as the other ANET printers with non-adjustable motor drivers. The firmware is proprietary and you can't make changes to it if you need to, but the firmware is a little better than a lot of the other ANET kits. And always remember ANET does not offer support for these machines. So if this printer was ready to go out of the box like it was supposed to be, I would call it a fully assembled 3D printer, but sadly it was not. After a few fumbles, it did turn out some really nice prints. Check out this Benchy. A very respectable print on the first try. I have not had any other issues or done any maintenance on this printer as of yet. The machine does sell for around 300 US with $10 to ship, and that's not a bad price for a fully assembled 3D printer. The machine I received really can't be called that. Every machine is going to be different, and you might get lucky. If you'd like to grab your own ANET A3 and help out my channel at the same time, see the affiliate links in the description below. This machine was purchased from the GearBest website with my own funds, and all opinions expressed are my own. I have not been in contact with ANET or GearBest on this review. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or consider subscribing to my channel. 
And if not, please leave your thoughts below. And as always, thanks for watching.